Well, when lawmakers passed the budget in Illinois, it axed health care for one group. That group, undocumented immigrants ages 40s to 60s. Now, they say it's a pause in those health care benefits, but who knows? Prior to that, Illinois was one of a few states in the U.S. to offer health care benefits to undocumented residents. Joining us now to talk about what this means to immigrant communities in Illinois, we are pleased to have Congresswoman Delia Ramirez of the 3rd District covering parts of DuPage and Cook Counties. Congresswoman, thank you for being with us today. Happy to be in with you since from Washington, D.C. Yeah, we appreciate you joining us from the nation's capital. Uh, immigrant rights and health care is, of course, often an overlooked part of, of the rights part of it, health care. Uh, I have your initial response to this decision uh, in hand here. You say that the Pritzker administration has done this under the pretense that it costs too much. Uh, what would you say to those who are concerned about the budget, uh, this chopping of health care, or that it is an inappropriate use of taxpayer dollars? Look, that, you know, I say to you that oftentimes we pit uh, the budget um, to some of the basic rights of people that live in our state and our country. Um, the budget is a moral document. And I also know, um, having led the legislation to expand health care coverage in Illinois, that not having health care for some of these communities, in many cases, some that never actually had insurance in their entire life, cost the state of Illinois three times the amount that actually covering them that does. And so when we look at the cost of the program, over the last three years, it's been about $780 million. The idea that this program would cost a billion, $1.2 billion a year seems pretty off for most people in basic math. Um, and it's also important to understand that we're not actually also assessing the cost of not insuring people. Part of why it was so expensive in that the beginning is because these are people that have not had preventive care, in some cases, their entire life. They've been in emergency rooms. And for the very first time, they're getting treated for high cholesterol, for diabetes, and for all these things that they have, because as essential workers, they've worked and not actually cared for their, been able to take care of their health care. Yeah, and that is noted, that they do work. They also pay taxes. And as you noted, it is important to point out that not covering people doesn't mean they're not covered. Uh, they still go to hospitals. They still need help. And being uncovered often costs the system more. It's a good point. So what do people watching at home who are undocumented or who have family members, um, what do they need to know right now? Because this basically shuts the door on health coverage for those 42 to 62 uh, who are undocumented. Yeah, in this window, right? What do they need to do? Look, I mean, and it, immediately right now, if you are 42 to 64 years of age um, and you fit the criteria, remember there's an income requirement. You must be eligible for Medicaid based on income. It doesn't mean that every single person undocumented is eligible. Uh, you have to have, have made less than, I think it's like less than $13,000 a year to be able to be covered. If you fit that criteria, you're an Illinois resident, go and enroll right now and know that the, I know the administration, I'm getting calls, um, legislators are getting called, community leaders are calling, and we're going to figure out if there's an opportunity to just take a step back. We certainly need to assess the cost of the program and the benefit of the program, but know that a number of us are doing everything possible to pause the pause, is what we call it, uh, so that we make sure that people have health care, people are able to continue to see the doctor. And for those that have been anxiously waiting to turn 42 to have health care, uh, know that we are doing everything in our power to ensure that they um, continue to have access after July 1st. Well, Congresswoman, this was passed in a massive budget proposed by a Democratic governor, passed by a Democratic legislature, even passed by Latinos in said legislature. Uh, what do you have to say to them? It's a pause for now for new enrollees, but you and I know pauses often lead to cuts. Uh, what do you have to say to your cohort, your party members, your people who said no? Look, I would say to you and to my colleagues and to the governor, we are partners. We have been fighting for immigrant rights in the state of Illinois. And what we did in the state of Illinois, New York is debating and doing right now. 
that what we've done has been a model for the entire country. After us came California and other big states, big cities are doing the same thing. Uh, this is not the final moment of the decision. Uh, we can decide to pause the pause, right? We could actually start a working group to really understand the real cost of not insuring people. And we can make sure that we have the fiscal uh, responsibility that, you know, it's been entrusted in us. It's not an either or. We can do both. And I know that this wasn't an easy process for anyone. Um, but I am certain that the Latino Legislative Caucus, I know that the governor wants to make sure that we do everything in our power to ensure that people have health care in Illinois. And I'm ready to work with them to figure it out. We did it in 2020. We did it in 2021. We did it in 2022. We have to do it now. Congresswoman, obviously migrant rights hot button right now. I want to double down here. You know, obviously it's hot button right here in Chicago of where to house asylum seekers who will foot the bill for the tens of millions it costs. That's just one issue. But at the foundation in America is, you know, we are a country of immigrants. So if Latino Democrats aren't fighting for Latino asylum seekers, who is? Look, I, it, I'm going to push back, Brad, because I do think Latino Democrats are fighting for for immigrants, and so are um, Asian American Democrats, and so are others. Look, here in Congress, um, I get to work with Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, who is chairing the Immigrant Caucus within the Black Caucus, and others, and we're all saying the same thing. If this country was built on immigrants, if we are the ones that have contributed to the economy every single day, if one out of five businesses are started by undocumented people, then we understand that not passing immigration reform, not providing housing to those seeking asylum is directly in contrast with who we say we are and our commitment to a healthy country. We have to be able to say that. And I think, Brad, to your point, what we need to do is we all have to be united on the same message. And we understand that there are policy choices, but there has to be political will. Are you fighting, because obviously you are, by coming here on our air to speak mm -hmm. of said issue, it's clear you are fighting. Are you concerned? that your brothers and sisters in Latino caucuses, you know, at the state level, are you concerned that they are not fighting for the rights of asylum seekers? I'm not concerned, right? I know them. Mm -hmm. Many of them were formerly undocumented themselves, like Rep. Avalar, uh, Senator Karina Villa, who has worked her life to be able to represent immigrants in West Chicago. Here's what happened in the General Assembly. Uh, there was a push-pull, right? How do we balance the budget? Mm -hmm. And we always end up in a space of conversations of scarcity, and the most vulnerable end up being on the front line. The Latino Legislative Caucus was unwilling to pass legislation to cut this program. Uh, we gave authority for some language. Should we get close to the 500 and I think $85 million um, that the, the program could cost, should we get close to that, then we can issue emergency rule. None of them imagined that an emergency rule um, would be announced a week after we signed the budget. That is not what they looked for. They were going to fight against that. And it's why you've seen them come out publicly and say, not on my watch. We have to be creative and we have to do everything possible to make sure that in some cases for them, their uncles, um, their constituents, their neighbors don't end up losing the ability to have health care. Right. And obviously, you know what it's like passing budgets. You can't get everything yeah. you want. There are things yeah. snuck in there that you probably don't even, you know, I mean, who, who can read the budget? I tried to, you know what I'm saying? So um, a couple hundred pages. Uh, yeah, yeah, a couple <laughs> hundred pages, line items, things coming in and out, et cetera. But let's speak to the Democratic governor, J.B. Pritzker. Um, this was part of his budget. Are you concerned that he uh, doesn't have the rights and welfare of asylum seekers at heart uh, as he has espoused in the past. I know that the governor has received a lot of pressure from all over the place, um, but I do know the governor's heart. And I trust that he is going to do the right thing here. Look, we all got heated here over what is the real cost of health care. Health care can't be a conversation of who's worthy of it and who's not. 
We believe that Illinois, and I brag here in Congress, in our in our U.S. Capitol, that Illinois is one of the most immigrant, pro-immigrant sanctuary states, right, in the country. I believe that hearing from the coalition, hearing from people who have sent us emails and said, because of you, my father didn't die from cancer. Because of you, my father or my mother is able to continue to work and contribute to this country because healthcare has made it possible. I think that he can decide, let's pause the pause and, and really make sure that Illinois continues to be a model. And I love to talk to him about it. I love to talk to the administration about it because I believe this, where there's a will, there's always a way. And there's money that we are not drawing down on federal match. You gotta remember also that LPRs, legal permanent residents are also in that formula. If you've been in this country and you have now received your green card, you have to wait until five years to be eligible for Medicaid under this program. If you're 42 to 64, you are able to access Medicaid. That is a place where we can draw down federal match. So I believe we should look at all the sources. What are we leaving at the table? And what is the real cost of this program? And we're going to come back and realize, Brad, that it actually is cheaper to insure people mm -hmm. than to cut their benefits. That argument is one to be made. Now, we, of course, don't take sides here, uh, but we appreciate you, Congressman Daly Ramirez. We appreciate uh, that you are fighting for something uh, on the 3rd District uh, for those in Cook and DuPage County. Congresswoman Ramirez, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Appreciate you.